may ngadlaw ka na tong tanan I hope you are all in the best of everything ana apay mo sa kapistay sa panglawas o puno sa dasya sa dino karong adlawa and today we will have our new topic which is biotechnology and GMO or genetically modified organism now what's in it for us in the future do you know what the future would like or what would it be like? Are we ready for it? Are you ready for the possibility of eating crops or meats with human genes in them? Kaya ninyo kaunon with human genes. Na isa gol na tao. You might not have an answer for now, but after this presentation, hopefully, you'll have the basis for your decisions. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to define biotechnology and its types. Yes, there are so many types of biotechnology and they are color-coded for easy classification. Articulate how GMOs are produced. So there are basic processes of creating a GMO. And um, all of types of GMOs produced follow these four basic processes. There are four basic processes. Explain the benefits. So when we say benefits, how it helps humans, how it helps other animals, and of course the environment. Possible risks. Possible risks include how it endangers humans, animals, and the environment. And in issues involving GMOs, issues, the debates, disagreements, rallies, disputations about the production or the availability of GMO in the community. Develop the ability of making intelligent, ethical, and humane choices in dealing with transgenics or the GMOs. Now, when we say choices, uh, they should be right and just, moral, respectful to other forms of lives, and to the plants, animals, and the environments as well. Now, let's start with talking about what biotechnology is. Now, it comes from three words, bio, techno, and logi or logos. Bio means life, techno means tools, and logi or logos means study. So literally, it is the study of tools from living things or the usage or the utilization of tools and technologies um, using living organisms or using life. Now, it is a technology that utilizes living systems and organisms or parts thereof to develop or create different products or technologies, products or technologies that we can use. It is multidisciplinary because it involves all sciences. So you name all the sciences there are and biotechnology involves them. Um, examples of biotechnology, um, the traditional biotechnology, this where the biotechnology processes that were um, taken care of before or that were being made or used before. Brewing, baking bread, fermenting, these are examples of early biotechnology processes. Okay, so um, since it involves all sciences, meaning all other sciences is interrelated through the application of biotechnical processes. Now let's start with a short history with biotechnology. In 1953, the DNA was discovered by James Watson and Francis Crick. And that was the beginning of now modern biotechnology. In 1973, 
Herbert Bayer and Stanley Cohen performed the first experiment involving genes or involving genetic recombination or what we call as recombinant DNA. So the manipulation of the genes of an organism started during this time. In 1982, the first hormone medicine known as insulin, you are familiar with this because this is used as a medicine for those who have diabetes. So maybe if you have family members who are suffering diabetes, they are having this medicine, insulin. It was the first hormone medicine to be developed. And it's a combination of the human insulin plus the bacteria, the bacteria plus made as the um, vector you know, for cre the creation of this um, medicine. In 1983, genetically modified foods were approved for human consumption. So at this time, 1983, the approval by the Food and Drugs Administration of um, developing genetically modified foods for human consumption and will be available commercially was approved. And in 1994, the first GMO food, which is the flavor savor tomato, became available in the markets. But a few years later on, it was um, stopped, the production was stopped, and then the supply in the market was also stopped because of certain issues. There were so many issues, specifically regarding health issues, so that's why it was cancelled. And um, so it's not anymore available, no, due to many issues and concerns regarding health. In 2015, FDA approved genetic modification in animals for food. So before that, uh, it was only plant, right? Plant production, GMO production of plants. But this time, uh, it already caters to animals. And the first animal GMO is the Aqua Advantage. Aqua Advantage is a um, is a salmon, or in our dialect, salmon. No, um, it was genetically modified uh, from the growth hormone of the Pacific Chinook salmon. Um, Pacific Chinook salmon. This is a breed of salmon, a natural uh, type of salmon which is found in the um, Pacific Ocean, in the deepest part of the ocean. And it is combined with the promoter um, gene of the ocean pout. An ocean pout is a type of an eel which has the ability of to anti-freeze, meaning it has the uh, capacity to withstand extreme coldness so it still survives in near um, freezing environment so very very cold environment um, they are still able to survive so it is combined with the gene of the um, Pacific gene of salmon so that this salmon will will have longer life and the growth is fast, no? And, uh, it's, it's having a faster um, degree of growing. And the growth happens all year round. It's not, uh, it's not um, seasonal. Unlike the organic salmon, it's seasonal. And the growth stops when they're out of season. And breeding stops when they're out of season, but this type of salmon is all year round. There is no season. Okay? And in 2002, 
the Philippines is the first in Asia to approve commercial cultivation of genetically modified crop, specifically the BT corn or the sweet corn. So for those who answered in our previous activity that nobody has eaten yet here among you, a genetically modified food, that's wrong because you've been eating sweet corn, right? That's a pity corn. As well as when you eat cheese, that's biotechnology product. Or um, you drink um, fermented drinks, that's also biotechnology products. The yogurt, okay? The the one with the pokikabat chat, what is that um, advertisement? Uh, yeah, that one, the lactobacillus enriched drinks. Okay? So, I am having a my notes also here so that I will not miss anything in sharing with you. Now, biotechnology teaches us how living organisms are used to create products. And it began when people modified organisms to provide the needs of the community. Um, I have shared to you earlier about fermentation, baking. These were the early biotechnology processes. Early biotech involved fermentation, as I said earlier too, using yeast to make alcoholic drinks and bacteria to make cheese and yogurt. Applications of biotechnology, there are four major applications. We have health. So health application, we will know later on what this is all about. And with these applications, in order for these applications to be achieved, they um, created goals. And there are also four goals. The first goal is to feed the world. When you say feed the world, this refers to developing or ensuring food security, ending hunger, which is one of the um, goals also of the United Nations, which is called the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And one of the goals is to end the hunger. And biotechnology is, um, is doing something. To, uh, creating something in order to achieve this goal of UN, which is to end hunger. And this is stipulated in their goal, which is feed the world. And this is entrusted to agriculture because agriculture will develop the foods that we eat, both plants and animal sources of foods. Fuel the world. It means reducing the use of fossil fuels. We already know the consequences of fossil fuels, which is emission of carbon dioxide, which is one of the causes of global warming. Increasing energy efficiency, decreasing carbon footprint, that involves the emission of carbon dioxide, and harnessing renewable sources of energy. So that's why at this present time, you are aware of um, the trending of the so-called renewable sources of energy, such as the wind energy or the biofuel, right? And um, the fuel industry is already uh, developing the LNG or the liquefied natural gas, which has um, less to zero carbon footprint. And that is focused by the industry applications of biotechnology. Clean the world, so it's more of self-explanatory. Clean the world, uh, it will be done by developing clean energy, clean environmental pollutants, um, using living organisms to clean and treat the environment. And this is focused under 
environmental application of biotechnology. And lastly, heal the world. Um, this is focusing on producing effective medicines and the so-called di direct delivery treatment. Before or um, nowadays, when you drink or when you ingest a medicine in form of tablets or capsules, um, it takes time before the medicine gets into the target organ. So for example, if you have toothache, it will take several minutes and even hours in order to get to the target um, organ, which is the tooth, right? So it takes like um, 30 minutes to one hour to two hours and even more in order for the ache to subside, for the pain to subside. But with this third delivery system of treatment, um, the medicine will be delivered directly to the organ, for example, the heart. Okay, so through um, genetic modification, um, the mode of delivery now is through um, a vector. And then that vector will be injected directly to the target organ so that the fast, quick, and immediate relief of whatever um, pain or whatever health problem there is, uh, it's, it's directly, it's directly um, remediated because of this technology. And of course, this has something to do with the health applications of biotechnology. By 2030, according to Lee 2016, a scientist and a researcher, he said that biotechnology will become as common as having a cell phone or going online. So I think you're familiar with online shopping. And by 2030, Lee said that it would just be like that, that um, the biotechnology is so common. And it's, it's so common and it's very reachable by everyone, hopefully. Let's go to the types of biotechnology. So there are different types of biotechnology which are color coded again for um, easy classification. The first is green biotechnology. Green biotechnology, uh, this is a picture that represents the green biotechnology. You see there it uh, focuses on agriculture and that is true because green biotechnology focuses on developing high-end crops, plants, and animal species for human consumption. And also for um, improvement of biodiversity. Now, um, then we are going to develop crops that are climate resistant, climate such as drought, um, freezing temperature, it's, um, and others. Uh, these crops will be able to survive these circumstances. The green biotechnology is also called agrobiotechnology and vegetal biotechnology because uh, it focuses on different vegetation. It will produce agricultural, agricultural products uh, that are disease resistant better nutrition or contain with better nutrition and um, foods that have medical value. So this time, we're eating our medicines. Instead of taking our medicines as a separate entity, we are now eating the medicine. Our food is our medicine and the medicine is our food. So that is the concept. Yellow biotechnology uh, it focuses on food production, such as of food such as juices or drinks, liquors, medicinal foods, um, gene modification of animal sources of dairy products, milk. All right, and what are examples of animals which are sources of dairy products? We have many. We have goat. We have cow. And others. And control of infectious 
diseases or infection in food. So the food will have a better um, resistance towards diseases that is harmful to the consumers. White biotechnology, as the picture suggests, uh, this deals with production of uh, consumer products, industrial and consumer products. Because the white biotechnology is also called industrial biotechnology. Um, this technology enhances the use of less resource through traditional processes in producing goods. Okay, so the traditional process and the modern process, processes are combined. Example, the using enzymes in detergents or in the soap that we use in, in uh, washing our clothes to reduce environmental impacts. So it is less um, impactful to the environment. And then production of industrial and consumer goods that are safe, that are effective, and that are practical. Next is blue biotechnology. And then again, the picture tells us about organisms under oceans and in the bodies of water. So the blue biotechnology is also termed marine biotechnology. It is concerned with the use of marine and aquatic organisms to produce foods, medicines, and to in, uh, ensure environmental conservation. Okay? Red biotechnology. So, as the picture shows us, it shows us medicines. In other words, red biotechnology focuses on healthcare. So, it is also called healthcare biotechnology. Uh, it will produce medicines and food and foods. So, it is about the medicine and food sciences and processes. Um, it also involves diagnostic techniques, development of vaccines, of antibiotics, like the hotly contested today, the development of vaccines for coronavirus. So the red biotechnology is in charge of this, as well as development of new drugs to cure diseases, drugs that use uh, living organisms and living species. Gray biotechnology, on the other hand, is concerned about bioremediation. That is one of the applications of gray biotechnology to um, have bioremediation for the environment. So, the gray biotechnology is also termed environmental biotechnology. Uh, it is concerned on applications related to health of the environment. So maintenance and improvement of biodiversity and elimination of pollutants of the environment. So that is the bioremediation, using of living organisms, plants and microorganisms to treat, to heal and to clean the environment from the pollution. Brown biotechnology involves um, the management of land and soil. So sustainable management of land and soil. Sustainability of land and soil. So it focuses on the arid zone and desert. So this is also called arid zone and desert biotechnology. Um, it has to develop arid lands and deserts. These are lands that are unproductive. So they're trying to make a way to make these lands and soils useful and productive. 
um, and also developing crops that could stand extreme climate, especially drought, since the deserts and the arid lands receive very less rain in a year. So they're trying to develop crops that could resist this um, extreme condition. And then it is combining nature and technology. So nature is also of a of consideration in this aspect. And the next is gold biotechnology. This is interesting an interesting biotechnology because it is related to bioinformatics. So the gold biotechnology is also term bioinformatics. This is um, involving the use of software and hardware and analysis thereof. Uh, the analysis of biological processes are also done uh, here in this um, type of biotechnology. In 2009, Jack Volter was a recipient of Bionic Leg. He's an American man. Um, this bionic leg produces a full ambulatory range of movements by communicating with the brain. So, an integration of artificial intelligence and the technology, and this is applied to a living organism, which is human being for this matter. So, like the normal leg, this bionic leg is able to transmit and receive messages from the to and from the brain. So it um, functions normally. Although there is a little difference, but the fact that it can send and receive message to and from the brain, this is something. So he's the first man or human to have been the recipient of this development in technology and he's able to live a normal life again because of this. Violet Biotechnology uh, deals with the study of legal aspects um, that surround biotechnology. So this has something to do with biosecurity, legal regulations of biotechnological processes, uh, bioethical consideration, and consideration of moral standards. So everything, um, cases, Issues regarding biotechnology are dealt with in the violet biotechnology. Dark or the black biotechnology, as the picture suggests, this is about war. Okay? So uh, the dark or black biotechnology is linked to bioterrorism and biological wars. So wars that are using weapons made of living organisms. It also investigates pathogenic, virulent, and resistant microorganisms and creating um, them into biological warfare and at the same time um, making a way to counteract their harmful effects. This is also called, the biological weapons are also called germ weapons. These are weapons of mass destruction. Mass destruction because it uh, devastates not only a simple group of people, uh, a small group of people, but um, if you are from a distant, you can still be affected by this because these microorganisms are airborne. So they will be transported by the air and once you smell this from the air, then you will be affected. You will be one of those casualties. So this is very dangerous. And this is something that everybody does not want to happen because it is very destructive um, in a wide range. So those are the different types of biotechnology. Now we go to the different biotech processes, but we have the following processes, tissue culture, which is an old tradition. We have been doing this. Um, Botanists have been doing this. Protoplast fusion, cell catalysis, immobilized enzymes, protein engineering. Uh, these are processes which 
we will not focus. We will focus on DNA manipul manipulation because this is the latest and this one is trending, being trending in the community today. Now, the DNA manipulation, meaning um, the DNA sequences being altered. So there is modification um, done by humans. And this is done through a big process or yeah, a major process in biotech, which is genetic engineering or genetic modification or gen gene splicing. So this is a process of using recombinant DNA or RDNA technology to alter the genetic make makeup of an organism. So uh, it is using the biotech concepts and one of the biotech processes. And um, when scientists do the process, uh, they will produce new species called the genetically modified organisms or GMOs or transgenics. Transgenics because there is a transfer of gene from one organism to the other organism. So GMO or genetically modified organism or the transgenic, what is it? So, GMO or a genetically modified organism is a plant, an animal, a microorganism, or any other organism whose genetic makeup has been modified in a laboratory. So, not in a traditional way, not in a natural breeding, but uh, it's laboratory enhanced using genetic engineering or transgenic technology or the gene splicing or the transgenic engineering okay so um, yes so a GMO is a transgenic that's very um, understandable a transgenic an organism as what I've said earlier containing a transgene introduced by technology so not the breeding method examples glowing fish okay so the glowing fish, this is, uh, this is actually glow fish or zebra fish. Actually, there are different colors. I just presented one color. Um, these are flourishing fish, meaning fish that are glowing in the dark. They glow in the dark. They have bright colors, neon colors, so to speak, of green, red, orange, yellow, blue, pink and other neon colors. Um, many different genes are used to develop the different colors. So combination of genes. So this is specifically multi-transgenic, this type of um, GMO. Another example is the featherless chicken. So the featherless chicken is product of gene mutations. Um, or the combination of naked neck and scaleless genes of the chicken. So it's being modified. And uh, the purpose of this feathers chicken is to produce a chicken which has low calorie. So the calories here are lower compared to the normal chicken. They are fast growing chicken and environmental friendly chicken so this chicken produce waste that are manageable very very small to the environment then the last example that i present is the strawberry fish this is a combination of the genes from arctic flounder fish so a fish that is located in the Arctic Ocean, which is very, very cold. So this fish has the ability to survive in snowy temperature, plus the bacteria. So the bacteria here is the carrier of the gene from the Arctic flounder. Now, it is combined and it is not directly um, injected to the strawberry, but it is sprayed into the strawberry okay so it is sprayed into, into the strawberry and the strawberry now 
will be cold resistance. So it can resist the extreme cold. This is no with temperature. And uh, it will not be affected. This the, the grape will still grow and will still bear fruit. Uh, even during snow or winter time because of these um, genes that are being spread all over the fruits. So actually this is um, yeah, applied directly as a spray. So there. Those are the examples. And let's go to the processes in creating a GMO. Again, there are four basic processes, identification, isolation, insertion, and expression. But for clarity, I am using the other author's uh, presentation, which has nine, nine procedures or processes. Um, actually 10, but um, the two of them can be integrated, so it becomes nine. Now, it starts with identification of the gene of interest. So for our example, we have the GM corn, which is the BT corn or the sweet corn that we are commonly calling. So the, the gene of interest there is the built-in pesticides or insecticide against corn borer. A corn borer is a worm that eats the corn. So it's basically when it eats the corn, the corn will die and will not bear fruit. So it's the gene of interest that is desired by farmers. Next is isolation of the gene of interest. So, um, and it comes from the bacteria. The bacteria is known as, the bacteria is known as Bacillus thuringiensis. So this is the source, this is a species of bacteria that lives in soil. This is a soil bacteria and it makes proteins that are toxic. So it will be toxic to the corn borer. So you get it from the, or the scientists get it from the BT or the Bacillus thuringiensis and isolate it to analyze, no? which of the parts of the DNA has the best trait okay? or um, yeah, carries the best trait, the best of the base trait. And the third is amplifying gene to produce many copies. So uh, it is left there in the laboratory and allowed to reproduce a lot of copies. Then associate the gene with an appropriate promoter and only a sequence. So the promoter will ensure that the trait will be delivered to to the um to the core. Okay. So insertion of this already um, identified gene to the plasmid, which is from the bacteria, but a bacterial plasmid. So uh, the orange color, this one, this is now the gene of interest. Okay. So um, multiplication of the plasmid in bacteria, so it is left there in the laboratory and allowed to multiply. And, well, it will be transfer of the construct to the recipient, which is the point there. So, um, in this process, in this time, the trait that is desired is transferred to the recipient, which is the current gene. And then integration of gene into the recipient genome there so it is integrated to the seed of the core now expression of the gene will be delivered once it is planted and when it uh, bears the fruit it will be inherited 
through the further generations of the corn. So the corn now carries the BT gene, which basically with the warm, the corn burr eats the corn, it will die because it will de devastate its um, internal organs, including the end system of the worm. Okay, so you'll now have uh, a better production of corn. The farmers now have better production of corn. The BT corn releases a toxic protein for the corn borer. It dies when it eats the corn. So there. Yeah. Now, that's, that was the GMO concerning um, plant. plant and animal um, application. But in terms of medicinal application to humans, this, there is what we call cell-based delivery. So genetically modified cells of human beings are involved. Now, to treat a certain disease, for example, of uh, the liver the liver is the organ which has a disease here or the problem okay so what will happen is that the adult stem cell will be taken from the bone marrow of the person and then it will be gathered it will be harvested and it will be combined to the um, genetically modified ES cell. So the ES cell will uh, block immune rejection so, so that it will be um, accepted by the liver. This cell is needed. So they are combined together and then they will get a bacteria, uh, a bacterial cell, a bacterial DNA. The bacteria will serve as the vehicle. Uh, delivery vehicle of that um, medicine. So it is being produced in the laboratory, they're combined, and then same process is undergoing the nine steps or the nine procedures. And then um, they will be integrated together. And then the genetically modified cells are reintroduced into the patient. So if you see this one, you combine the adult stem cell and the GMES cell and the bacteria as a delivery vehicle. So you let it multiply in the laboratory. So after multiplying, the genetically modified cells now are reintroduced into the patient directly to the target organ, which is the liver. Okay, so if compared to the usual treatment, the injection, the, the um, drinking of tablets or capsules, this is very quick and this is very dynamic. And this really going to the target organ all at once. So these are the advantages of GMOs or transgenics. First, enhance desired traits, just like the Betty corn. Yes. We have added the desired traits, which is the um, best resistance. Okay? And improved nutritional content, um, just like the Federalist chicken or the um, salmon, no? the, uh, the aqua advantage salmon. Improved nutritional content, less time than controlled breeding. Okay, just like the, uh, the salmon again, it's becoming all year round, the production, not seasonal. Improves accuracy, just like the direct delivery um, system of the medicine, which is more accurate because it is getting to the targeted organ right away. Herbicide tolerance. So, um, the reduction of the use of herbicides. Cold to tolerance, just like the strawberry fish. Medical advantages, because at this time, they are developing foods that are medicines. Virtual end of world hunger, one of the goals of biotechnology to end hunger. 
cheaper or faster to grow and don't have to be rich in plant. So, the Filipino farmers who are advocating the GMO corn, uh, they say that they have um, saved, you know, saved a lot of uh, um, production costs. At least possibilities of any and anything alive can be genetically modified, yes, including humans, that is true. Reduce production costs, um, I've said that earlier already. Uh, improve air quality because this time, especially in terms of fuel production, um, they are ensuring to produce sources of energy that are um, having zero carbon footprint protect land because it ensures productivity and it treats the land and soil degradation problem. Conserve water because they're trying to develop um, crops, plants that need less water, especially in deserts and arid areas. Sustainable food production because there will be massive production of foods, volumes of uh, produces or products will be insured. Now, if you attain all of this, this will give us good life. And remember what Aristotle tell us about good life. Good life is uh, specially attained when we have moderation in everything. So moderation is the key. These are the disadvantages. If there are advantages, there are also disadvantages of GM foods and products. First, uh, concerning the environmental hazards, unintended harm to other organisms. Okay, so this is a development of the BT corn because it was found out that it does not only affect the corn borer worm, but it also affects the caterpillar population for monarch butterfly. So they were not able to transform themselves no, into a butterfly because they died when they uh, were ingesting the pollens from the corn, from the flowers of the corn. They're not eating actually the corn, but they were just able to ingest the pollens from the corn flowers and they all died because they were intoxicated by the toxin produced by the um, BT. So, this is something that the proponents also would look into because this is um, detrimental to the environment as well. And if uh, the GMs or the GM organisms will um, will cause uh, threats to the other organisms, there will be disruption of the ecosystem. Reduce effectiveness of pesticides. Yes, because uh, generally, organisms will mutate. So, mutation will immune these pests to, uh, to be affected no? by, the, by the pesticide, which will in turn give way to um, existence of a super pest the pest that is that is uncontrollable so an, an intended modification of similar species due to cross pollination so there are say for example um, plant species that are not supposed to be uh, not supposed to be having a characteristic, a particular characteristic, but because of um, an intended cross-pollination, they will inherit that um, trait which might be harmful to them or to the environment. Upsetting the ecosystem, I already mentioned this earlier. Development of super pests, I also um, mentioned this earlier. Problems about religious health, Etc. because there are certain issues which you will know later on. 
destroying the normal farming system of course because the farmers now will not till the land the way they did it before so um, the normal farming system is very helpful in terms of um, the ecosystem interfering the normal DNA system of course because um, humans are altering it the laboratory um, alters the natural sequence so there is going to be a side effect on that widening the financial gaps between developed and developing countries true because most of these procedures are very expensive and developing countries and poor countries cannot afford so they keep on um, depending on the developed countries and it will owe them a lot financially Let's go to the social, cultural, religious, and ethical issues of GMOs and transgenics. We'll start with social relations. Now, in terms of social relations, GM foods are not welcome for health reasons, creating debates, especially in countries such as the United Kingdom or even in the U.S. Even if it started in the U.S., there, the, the debate, the disagreements are very strong in the country. Cultural, religious, and ethical issues. So different cultures and religions raise concerns about regulatory mechanisms to ensure that culture and religion and its practices are being protected because there are religious and cultural practices that are needed to be taken into consideration. We know we have different cultures, we have different religions, we have different practices and somehow respecting um, them for this is very, is very important. No, it's very important. Issues concerning transgeneticism involving prohibited animals and insects, especially the Hindu religion, uh, the Hindu teaching. Uh, they are not allowed to eat animals. So developing transgenics using animals would be a no-no for them. Religious faithfuls believe that God created everything perfectly and man does not have the right to manipulate. So there are um, there are religious faithful, those that are very much attached to their faith and those that are very conservative, they still believe that what God has made should remain as it is and uh, they believe that nobody has the right to change god's creation and that is something that everyone of us also would respect and lastly political and economic issues so political and economic issues uh, refer to or includes um, the issues about the government lacking legislative resources on production and distribution of GMOs. And that is true. Even in the Philippines, there is no legislation yet as to the production, creation, and distribution of GMOs. Uh, because if it is not established, there will be a possibility of um, misuse, mishandling, misproduction and it will become a problem and economically as uh, have been stated earlier the rich countries will continue to become rich and the poor countries will continue to become poor because of the high um, cost no financial cost entailed in doing this type of procedure so you now have an idea of 
the modern biotechnology and the genetically modified organisms or the transgenics. Now, my question is, are you a pro or not pro-GMO? I want you to answer this question with a yes or no and explain why. Three sentences only uh, in the comment section. So you comment your answer. And additionally, you have to do this activity. Now, this time you are a genetic engineer. So consider yourself as a genetic engineer. Now you identify a particular problem in your barangay. So let's start with our barangay. And then you identify a particular problem. Your goal is to bring solution to that problem through biotechnology, specifically genetic biotechnology. So you're going to, or genetic engineering, you're going to invent or produce a transgenic or a genetically modified organism that will solve that existing problem. Then you're go going to follow the template below for your submission. First, Community problem identified, for example, malnutrition. That is the problem that you have observed in your community for a long time. So this is trait of the GM organism. Uh, for example, complete set of vitamins and minerals for growth and development. Uh, especially development of muscles and development of body organs. To make a person healthy. Now, source of organism of the desired trait. So, you will identify an organism that is the best source of vitamin, growth vitamins. Now, the grow foods or the grow vitamins. So, you have to identify these organisms and then you get the DNA from this organism. So, we the best trait and then combine that to the DNA of the carrier organism, which is the, um, for example, you would want to use eggplant as the carrier of the desired organism. So that when people eat the eggplant, because the eggplants are known to only supply us water, but it has um, small amounts of vitamins and minerals in it. Yeah. Uh, we get from the eggplant. But yeah, that's true. It has more water content. Then, uh, you also include the vector. What vector will you use to um, make this trait multiply? Because we use a multiplier. No? So, Say, for example, a bacteria. What type of bacteria? Is it a soil bacteria, a virus, whatever? You just try to research of the best carrier or the best, best vector. Okay? Then, you give the new name of the GM organism you developed. Say, so for example, the uh, Nutrifield talong or Nutrifield eggplant or you create a very uh, a very catchy and a very artistic very interesting name for your GM organism then you provide the drawing of the desired new organism so what would it look like the shape the color okay so how sorry how does the organism work in solving the problem identified? So, in not more than five sentences, you explain how does the implant now solve the problem, malnutrition in your community? And lastly, what could be the positive issue? Possible. Possible issues your GMO may face. So, the issues um, identified earlier, um, what was it? religious, cultural, ethical issues, political, um, economic issues, social relations issues. So you identify them in not more than five sentences. Okay, so you're going to submit that in our classwork. I will create a folder there where you can submit. And 
I think that's all. If you have questions regarding the topic, you can also send your question through the comment section. And I hope you are doing well always. And I, I pray that you will be blessed. And uh, please take care always. Always follow the safety and health protocols because the virus is still um, challenging us at this time. And we pray that there will already be vaccine for it so that we can freely do whatever we want to do and live the normal life that we had before. And um, be positive in your thoughts and actions always. Let us fill the world with positivity one person at a time. Thank you so much and goodbye for now, everyone.